friends, welcome to Global Fashion Workshop channel. And today our special guest is our fashionable denim expert Vitaly Shkrigunov. Hello friends. I'd like to greet you in a different way as well. Hello friends, nice to see you again on our channel. Amazing person, she speaks English, that is just a miracle. It's very interesting that Vitaly Shkrigunov sews jeans with his own hands. But also you can say that he uses a sewing machine as well, but generally speaking, with his own hands. Today we decided to make a small review for our new foreign denim experts, so to speak, who are only starting to master mom jeans. Many ladies in our Russian-speaking community have tried and sewn at least one pair of jeans. I often receive their denim debuts throughout the year, and many of them are repeating their works. During this year we came to a conclusion that this video is simply necessary. We need to make a review of the course itself for the newcomers, and also to talk about... Here's our guinea pig. Sorry, Natalia. Right now we're going to assemble a whole package of materials for sewing a true pair of jeans. In fact, this video has been a long time coming for our Russian-speaking audience. As for the foreign audience, this video will be helpful in creating and traveling in the denim world. First of all, we'll review the course and what it consists of, the theoretical part, so to speak. In our case, Natalia will be the guinea pig, because Natalia has never come across sewing. She's more of a linguistics expert, which is also important. So, what are the advantages? The advantage is that Natalia will ask questions using layman's terms regarding any nuances which we, as professionals, often turn a deaf ear to. And that's the beauty of it, that a novice can dive into the denim world right away. So, let's focus on our main theoretical course. It consists of this brochure here, it has a technical sketch of the mom fit and specifications. In this case, it's been translated into English. Here is the specification of cuttings. Here are all the cutting denominations. In addition, here's a small drawing, what each piece looks like, and a grading scheme, which is very important. Many ladies DM'd me on Instagram that there were some nuances. But it's fine. At first something may go wrong, it's possible that you didn't quite understand something or didn't calculate correctly, but later on I kept receiving messages from my denim colleagues who learned to deal with the construction of the pants, jeans in particular, thanks to this scheme. And that's why it's important to go deeper and get the feeling of how it all works how jeans become attached from size to size, so this is a small theory, so to speak. When do we start the practical part? There is one more necessary nuance of the main part of the course. Here are the printed patterns. We got them thanks to a commercial printing center where they have a plotter, which can print papers with the width of 90 centimeters. So all the cutting pieces are with added allowances, with all the notches and reference points, so that you can easily assemble all of this and don't have to baste anything. Vitaly, please tell us, what size are these patterns for? The basic patterns in the course are for size 26. It can also be size S in Euro sizes, and in Russian standards it'll be size 44 or 46. So the advantage is in the following. Since jeans are graded in sizes that are in centimeters and not in inches, in Russian understanding we have a 4 centimeter interval between sizes, whereas in American understanding it's all in inches. Therefore, there is a 2.5 centimeter gap between each size. 
that is, we can get the size of a required person more precisely, so our chance to get the right size doubles. Another important nuance, we have this square here, just an X factor. When we get these patterns after printing, we must measure this square. It must be exactly 10 by 10 centimeters. If it meets the parameters precisely, your printing was implemented correctly and accurately meets all the required sizes. Can we print a pattern at home on an A4 format? As far as I know, in the technical support department, the ladies, some sort of magicians, can tell the sequence in which you can place this on an A4 format. But me, being an industrial person, well, this is some sort of makeshifts. In any case, when you get into more detail regarding the multiplication, you'll understand that each millimeter plays an important role. And if you didn't match all the cuttings correctly or accurately, you'll have some errors. That's why I highly recommend this print here. Well, our subscribers are in luck. They can print these patterns of a basic size, especially for them, and ship them when they buy this course. Yes, this is great. That's a very needed option right now. Okay, as for the patterns, the patterns have been created exactly the same way as at a production site. That is, these patterns have been fully prepared for a production startup. You can print them by the thousand, therefore we have all the nuances here, grain line, notches and so on. If we follow everything, we'll assemble everything without basting, like Lego. Okay, well, we talked about the theoretical part, I think you have questions. I don't even know where to start. I'm interested to know how to cut the jeans with the help of these patterns if we already have the denim fabric. Do we first need some fabric and then later we... No, no, naturally in the course we go through this cutting process in great detail together, how the patterns are placed, in what sequence, how to check the grain line in compliance with the selvage. That is, all these nuances have been considered in great detail. In our case, if we violate the grain line, during the wash, your jeans might get skewed into some wrong side. Can you please tell us where this grain line is? The grain line is here. It goes across the cutting and we have cuttings of a yoke, for example, and some other nuances, which may be in an unusual direction. I mean, there are some intricacies and nuances here. Is this the belt? This is the belt, here's the belt loop. If a person comes across this for the very first time and doesn't understand which cutting it is, they can look at the specification and find its number, here they are, find the number on the cutting itself and learn what it is and how many of them are needed in the process. Very clear. Yes, okay, we're done with the theoretical part, and now I think it's the most interesting part of our journey, which we didn't really mention a lot in our course, to be honest. It is the assembling of materials. We talked about the fabric, the one we worked with during the course, but this time we decided to, again, the reason we have this novice person here, who is a dummy in sewing production, for which the ladies, our colleagues in Global Fashion Workshop, tease her. And so I decided to defend this lady. We'll look at all the fabric packages here now. Natasha, you're going to be a denim professional. You'll know how to differentiate denim. I'll be your competition. Not for me. You'll say, colleagues, you know wool and silk, but I know denim. Not a lot of people know that. 
So friends, our editors will switch a bit, and now, thanks to editing, we'll make everything nice. The editors made this beauty for us. If only it were like this in real life. Now I'm going to tell you how to choose denim. First, let me tell you how it's made at large-scale production sites, where a thousand pairs of jeans are born. Here's the thing, let's start from here. Here's the basic fabric. It's navy blue, just a cloth. As I like to say, this is just a Soviet school uniform. So unsightly, good for nothing. If you saw it in a store, you would pass by it. But why? This is a great classic fabric. I think you even look great in it. Yes, but it's not blue enough, it's no good, and, as I say, any denim is like a diamond, which you can get unless you polish it really well. It's good in that uh, the more you wear it, the better and nicer it becomes, and that's exactly what they do at production sites. Let's say they got several thousand meters. They need to calculate how much it shrinks during chemical treatment, washing, pretty much everything. They need to calculate all the coefficients, include them into patterns. In fact, our patterns have these average coefficients included. That's why when you sew, you do it without fitting. And when you put them on, they'll be a bit too big for you, a bit loose. These patterns include a small shrinkage coefficient, usually 3-4%. Thus, next in the process, we start learning how the fabric will change after being washed in soap water, when it's boiled out and processed with a manganese solution. That is, this bleaching here, first it's uh, rubbed on a mannequin, then the manganese solution, and then after washing, the redox reaction takes place. And here is how we get this beautiful white denim. Can you buy such denim? Or can you find one? Just this one, because if we first wash it, and many ladies like to first soak this fabric, then dry it and only then start working, it's okay when working with wool, silk, shirt cotton or suiting cotton. In this case, by no means can you do that because this fabric is processed with a special starch compound finishing mixture. And thanks to it, this fabric feels papery. And when ironing during the sewing process, it'll be very dense, will iron well, and you'll have straight lines. And these are the intricacies, the reason we love jeans so much. This will never happen if you wash them first, because the starch compound has to be worn out consequently. So, no washing before sewing. Correct, washing only afterwards. Okay, here's the basic boiling. Here's where our chemists worked on this fabric, looked at the reaction, made holes. Can you do this at home? Yes, you can easily do this at home. I think we'll solve this in the future. There are some craftsmen out there. Yes, and here's a nice one. This one was washed with volcanic pumice. This one with volcanic pumice looks very nice. No yes, very nice. But this is a story about production, I was just teasing. This is acceptable for those who deal with large-scale boiling production. In English, I believe it's called after washing. Okay, so we've played enough. Let's look at the fabric now. I'll hide this here, not to confuse you. But anyway, when you start working with fabric, you buy your cut, you add, let's say, 20-30 centimeters extra, so that you can sew these small pant legs and play with them at home. You need to wash them at 90 degrees Celsius or 194 Fahrenheit. That is, before that, you need to sew and try it on. What is the length, the width, the length along the outseam as well? 
All of this is ironed, and along the inseam, which is stitched, that is, it's secured. Since thread doesn't shrink, it'll still hold the seam more. That is, sometimes it happens that the shrinkage along the outseam is completely different from the one on the inseam, and of course along the hemline. Because we know about shrinkage on grain line and crosswise grain. Right. At that, it is also different in the seams. Anyway, there are such nuances. We try to minimize in our case, since they've been already accounted for in the patterns. That is, in your course, you explain all the details and intricacies. Yes, not completely. As I said, the video was in the making, because we already realized that our Russian tailors have inquisitive minds. They started to dive in even into these intricacies. That's why we decided to pay close attention to it. So, in our case, your jeans will probably become like this after six months of wearing them. That's the whole trick. And the so-called denim hearts. Denim fans love raw denim. That is, the more you wear it and the less you wash it, some people make marks on pockets of a number of washes, the greater this fade looks, it appears only due to wearing. Removing all this, now let's focus on the fabric. This time I decided to divide our types of fabric into two parts, since we have, of course, mom jeans and slim jeans, which are absolute opposites in their properties. In this case, if these are mom jeans, it should be 100% cotton or include a tiny bit of elastane, but it's an exception. We're going to look into it right now. That is, let's say we have 100% cotton. Here it is. If we place it like so, here's the grain line, which is the feature of denim. If we rip it along the crosswise grain, this grain line is at a small angle. Here is the angle, and its feature is in the fact that it's 100% cotton. If we take it like this, it doesn't stretch at all. Try it. It's very raw. Very hard, yes. And if we take it along the horizontal, due to its diagonal weaving, it actually has some distortion. It gives some sort of pulling. That is, any denim can be stretched due to the construction of its weave. Okay, here is one option. This is a regular type, that is, not very expressed weave, and navy blue in color. Okay. Here are these ones. Here the weave is bright and clear, but it's gray, and it can also be blue, red, pink. It all depends on our textile workers. Is this 100% cotton as well? This is also 100% cotton. It's quite raw and rough. Feel it. In addition, the quality of denim, its density, differs not by hand feel, but by weight the weight of fabric. Correspondingly, textile workers mark it in ounces. Again, this is the American system, not the metric one, where we measure it in grams per square meter. That's what they call it. Let's say there are 10 ounces, 11, 12. 14 is very dense. In this case, this is 11. Actually, this can be felt by hand. You'll see. It looks like a work is uniform. It'll never wear off. Yes, that's true. I want to say that I specifically chose this light denim. This is, let's say, 8-9 ounces. It is very soft, but it's 100% cotton. It does not stretch at all. It's very raw. But again, due to its composition, this is 100% cotton. It doesn't stretch, doesn't distort, very rigid. 
Due to its thinness, despite it, it is good for mom jeans, because in mom jeans the allowances for looseness are calculated for raw fabric. That is, the very first jeans were made out of this, uh, there was no stretch in the fabric at all, nobody created it yet. Where can you find this fabric? As a rule, in Russia, Italian stock suppliers help us. In any more or less large city, you can find it in any Italian fabric store. Any medium-sized store has at least some denim. I work directly with textile workers in Turkey, Greece, Italy. In my case, they offer samples of what can be made out of this fabric. In our case, we often buy a pig in a poke and have no idea what it'll be. Anyway, even some Chinese inexpensive fabric can be good. It's important to look only at nuances, which we're going to talk about now. Here we even have this light fabric. Most often it's used for shirts, although in summertime jeans made of this fabric will be very comfortable. Okay. Great. Here is another great sample, which consists of not only cotton, but also viscose, that is, it shines. It's quite raw, feel it. It's so comfortable, but thicker. It's very raw, still there's no elasticity. It's good for mom jeans as well, due to its structure the fact that it's dense but thin. And here we have a rarity. It's also called denim. But the weave here is not just twill, it's split twill. That is, it creates a herringbone pattern, if you look closely. Can you see it? It jumps up and down. Due to this weave, it is more flexible and softer. Right? softer. Now it's with a grey tone. But after it's soaked in water and washed, the blue will start fading from it. Amazing! This is the most interesting part. Now we're going to get to this X factor. One second. Here we have water, here's the fabric. We'll put it into the water. Of course, it's very weird when you do it in a fabric store. Ladies who work at those stores already know me. They know I'll start to rub the fabric, spit on it, bite it. Let's start with my favorite one here. Look here. During the process, when you buy fabric in a store, you'll never know how much this fabric will fade. Sometimes it happens that you work with denim and you're blue all over, like an avatar character. It's just crazy. That's why we have a wet handkerchief, and just don't be shy, you can simply spit on it and just rub a little, rub along the crosswise grain and on grain line, and look at that. Is this normal? Absolutely. Why do you think during Soviet times the notorious all-union state standard would not pass denim? because denim bleeds color too much. In the Soviet All-Union State Standard, it was clearly stated that the dye cannot migrate from the fabric anywhere. It should be there at attention. And denim did not comply with that at all. What is it? It fades. Okay, good. You see, it bleeds this beautiful blue color, and here it is as in watercolor. That is, during the process, it'll be whitening exactly in this range of blue. You get it, right? We can try rubbing this one here. It fades a little differently. You see, the tones are different. Let's try another one. You see, this one is bluish, although it looks gray. So this is how we rub. Now the most interesting part, the X factor. Ladies get scared once they see me with this thing here, but it's regular sandpaper, which can be bought at any construction materials store. 
Any man who has nails, screws, hammers, screwdrivers has sandpaper. Now I'm going to show you and you'll have to try it yourself. You take a piece hanging somewhere far. And you'll need to rub the edge of the fabric. Try it. Doesn't matter how to rub, along, across, along the grain line, along the selvage, don't be scared, rub harder. Yes, you don't need to look at the sandpaper. Look what a beauty. I hope the camera can show it. That is, we found out how this fabric looks after it's worn. The sandpaper needs to be of the finest grit, and this is how denim turned out to be. And here is grey denim, which is brighter. Let's do it on a piece. There it goes. Yeah, very beautiful bluish tone. Yes, and here is the most interesting part. Now we're going to finish it. And we'll try the stretchy fabric that's good for slim jeans. Let's move this. We'll come back to it later. This one here is interesting. Look at its weave. Here are some stripes along and here are some knots across. It's also called circular twist. This direction here is called ring twist. Textile workers call it ring. And if there's this one here across, then it's called ring ring weaving, meaning two ring twists. And so, let me... When you start rubbing them, you try. Don't be afraid, rub hard, push, don't worry. You see how beautiful it's turning out? This small moire effect of the weave starts to show. That is, it's also a small surprise for those who are used to just buying fabric. It'll be like this. In our case, denim turns out like this when being worn. It'll be like this, no matter what you do. In the end, when you sew jeans, you can try them on, because you can't wait to wear them, to rub them off. Put them on and just rub all these parts on you. Pockets, knees, these nice diagonal folds, which are called whiskers in English. In Russian, they are called mustache. Whiskers. Just mustache, there's no cat anymore. Any cat is grey in a dark room. Our denim is all grey. Only the mustache is left. Right, so you see all of this can be rubbed on a knee with a sandpaper. And there you have a denim beauty. In fact, even your garment was rubbed on a mannequin at a production site. In any case, some people use hands, some sandpaper to make them look old. Okay, we've talked about the fabric, which contains cotton. We realized that it fades. We learned how to look at it and the tone of the fade. Sometimes it happens that the fabric is almost black, but once you start rubbing it with sandpaper or use a wet handkerchief, it becomes blue. Now I know what to do in the fabric store. Come to the store, tell your back to the salesperson, spit on the fabric, rub it with sandpaper. In other words, misbehave. 
Yes, it's like back in school we had this thing called bad advice or something like that. <laughs> Dear subscribers, today you saw a very detailed review from Vitalish Kriganov on what fabric to choose for sewing mom jeans. I'm happy that Natalia, who doesn't deal with the sewing business at all, started to dive into this topic, and in the future I'm expecting jeans from her. There shouldn't be just linguistic success, but also sewing success as well. Hope never dies, Vitaly. Considering that our cameramen basically know all the terms and sometimes correct us during filming, I think that translators at some point will say, ah, you based it here, but should have stitched. See you soon, see you in our next videos, Natalia. Goodbye, to be continued.